I said something Sunday. I don't know if you all was catching a lot of what I was talking about, but there is a uh, false bishop, false apostle movement, that false covering, false overseers, and uh, it's it's so blatant that I was shocked how how, how open it is. I, I, I thought it would be something that. You know, when you read the Bible about falseness and deception, you thinking the devil's going to really, really hide it. But you realize Satan doesn't really hide it well. If you just look, you can see it. And so uh, I was looking at some things, and I want to get this message out because I saw the, 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 the danger. Uh, and it, 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 it explains why the church world is going the way it's going. It's almost like how the, how the natural is, how no matter who becomes president, the country just seems to go a certain way, still goes down. It's kind of like in the church world how we just see ourselves going down, down, you know, as far as less, less uh, true uh, disciples, less uh, people truly living for God, scandals after scandal after scandal. Uh, and so it, it's kind of, you, you know, you... You remember years ago, you know, people were saying, uh, you know, what happened to the church? You know, what happened to the standard of the church where we had strong ministries and strong men and women of God? And then you got, like I said, if you watch these shows now, Preachers of L.A. or any of these little reality shows and you follow the lives of some of these people, you wonder if they even, they don't even have an image of salvation now no more. It's just like all totally, I told you that, normalcy, uh, Christ, no, a normal Christian is like the new rebellion. We look so different now from the world, and uh, all you have to do is turn it on Christian TV to find this out. Now, what I want to talk about today is the, I believe this is one of the sources that crept into the body of Christ unaware, amen, and, um, and we didn't discern it, amen, and so now it's, uh, it's needed. You know how you take dough put yeast in it and you need it. This, this is needed throughout the body now. That's why the Bible says a little leaven leaven a whole lump. You have to watch that no leaven is sown because once the leaven is sown you can't get it out of the dough once it's put in there. So that's what we see uh, in the body of Christ. I want to deal with this today because some of you all may have come out of some of these backgrounds and uh, even the way I teach and preach and you need to understand um, that I'm a type of person that I'm not into personalities or the greatness of ministries or the size or the, who the pastor preacher is. I don't care so much about that as much as I care about um, the truth, amen? And so we need to have the truth, and I believe that because people are starving for it right now, I mean, I have so many people calling me, just talking to me so much about uh, the word they're not getting. They're just not getting fed, and they, people don't understand why. So we're going to give a little light today, shed a little light on it. T today I'm going to call this message the spirit of Rome, the spirit of Rome. Amen? Uh, I, uh, some of this stuff, I've said some of these things before, but I want to get this in a, in a, in a I'm going to update it a little bit. You know, the spirit of Rome is uh, what, the spirit of Rome comes upon an empire once that empire is in its last stages of fame, uh, this, uh, this, this Roman spirit seems to be the spirit that destroys all empires. Now, of course, before, the Rome, before, the, uh, before Rome was an empire, we had the Persians, we had the Greeks. I mean, no, we had the, we had the Persians, we had uh, uh, the empires of the Bible, the, all the Philistines, the Enes, the Ites, all of that stuff. But they all got into the same thing Rome was into before Rome fell. Amen. So when I say the spirit of Rome, I'm talking about the lifestyle, the, the operations of Rome, how Roman, how the society of Rome fell into degradation and imploded. Say imploded. Amen. It means it's self-destructive because when, when people are pledged, the Bible says, and it's, it, Carl was talking to the Romans too, and he said, men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, whenever a society is pleasure-oriented, it will enact laws that can never sustain the culture because the culture is surrounded by pleasure only, and so they'll do things that will never be able to sustain the, the culture. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Case in point, if, if they pass laws about homosexuality, if you had homos if everybody was homosexual, the human race would end within a year. So if we really enacted these laws, say amen, they, they enacted laws that the law of the age of consent, which is this legal pedophilia, these are the states of, or the, or the uh, these are the characteristics of a fallen society. And right when you see these things pop up, that society is about ready to totally decline and implode. Are y'all there? I'm not there. Okay, so, so the spirit of Rome is what is now upon us, amen, and it's upon us in a strong way. It's so strong that uh, we're not even shocked by some of the things that preachers do. Amen. We ain't even shocked no more. Amen. It's just like a normal, natural thing. Amen. I know nobody's perfect when I talk about perfection. And, and, and what we're talking about here, uh, because I know people have problems with finances and, and money and stuff when it comes to church and preachers. That's not really the issue or the problem that I see because all throughout the church ages, people were rich. If it wasn't the case, Jesus wouldn't have had a bag of money for Judas to steal. So the, the money's not the issue. What you see, was, what, what you see the, the mark of true ministry, like Jesus' ministry and Paul's ministry, the mark of true ministry was the lack of sexual perversion. They didn't have that in their ministry. The other one. The sexual perversion is the sign that a ministry has become false or a teacher, a leader has become false. Because sexual perversion is the um it's the agreement with the demonic are you understanding what i'm saying that's the best way i can say it so when you see ministries now there are ministers that can make mistakes okay mistakes are you know brother messed up with some money you know he might have uh him and his wife was going through they may have separated but got back together these are mistakes but when you see a prevalence of of divorce and when you see uh, um, 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 fornication and adultery and uh, because you know adultery is not a one time act you know uh, uh, that's the reason why the men couldn't stone the woman that was caught in adultery because that wasn't the first time she committed adultery they probably was committing adultery with her that's just the first time she ever was caught doing it so adultery has a trail to it so whenever you see those things going on it's the mark that a ministry has become false come on talk to me because that's one of the greatest marks. And not saying that, I'm not talking about it necessarily the people, because the people are going to fornicate. People are going to make mistakes. People are going to do that because they don't. But I'm talking about when you see it prevalent in the leadership. Not saying leaders can't fall and make mistakes. I'm talking about when it's a prevalence. The mistakes I'm talking about is when a leader does something like that and then doesn't accept the accountability for it. Y'all, come on, hear what I'm saying. Because the spirit of Rome is, uh, the spirit of Rome is all about secrecy, secret sexual sin. Secret sexual sin. I, I made a statement sun, Sunday that homosexuality is a church sin, and it is. Because homosexuality is religious worship. It, the act of homosexuality is worship to a demon, to a deity, to a God. Not our God, but to, come on, talk to me. So that's why it's a, it's a religious sin. Let's say it better, religious sin. And uh, it hides in the church. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So because of, now I don't have time to give you a history on Rome or nothing like that. What I will tell you is that um, the Roman Catholic Church was, uh, was started, of course, by Emperor Constantine, which declared that Christianity would be the religion of the Roman Empire. But he never stomped out all of the paganism and stuff. He just said Christianity would be there, adopted Christian practices and and, and secretly um, place Christian practices over top of pagan worship. In other words, on the surface, you're doing this outwardly as Christian, but on the bottom part, what nobody sees, you're still in agreement with the pagan gods that you were into. That's why Catholicism fits with everything in the world. You can't, it'll fit with any religion because they'll allow you to do, as long as you call them saints, you can do that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this is the reason why uh, Catholicism uh, is, uh, was dangerous. And the first church, uh, when they taught on this, they taught that Catholicism was the uh, 
the false doctrines and not only Catholicism, but the Jews, the Judaism, the doctrines of circumcision and going back under the law, that was also false teaching. Uh, the apostles considered that to be false teaching and, um, and, 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 uh, and, and um, establishing the priesthood and the, the Roman uh, uh, structure of church was also considered to be false doctrine. And uh, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So um, Paul, if you study his work, he done a lot of work fighting the spirit of Rome. He fought the spirit of Rome because Paul was raised as a Roman citizen. He understood the ways of Rome. That's why the book of Rome, uh, the, 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 the epistle to Rome, to the Romans are so strong. He talks so graphic, especially in the first chapter, because he knows the, the apostate, degraded, totally perverted society. That's why he's writing so strong to them. He's lived among them. He know their ways. He know their secrets. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And how they really get down and how they truly worshiped. He understood that this would be the destruction and the fall of that culture. So he wrote, so the way Paul wrote, he wrote in a first-hand understanding of these people. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? Now, Paul's fight, if you study his life, he fought to try to keep the gospel pure. Is this making any sense, anybody? He fought to keep the gospel pure. Paul understood that the enemy of the gospel was false doctrine. It was false teachers, people that would come in and sow part truths, have truths, or add to the gospel by causing the, per causing the people to get over into works and get out of grace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We're not talking about faith works. We're talking about working to be saved. Not doing works because we are saved or doing works because we believe. Every believer should have works. But, 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 working, but, but works do not equal belief. We work because we are, because we, we believe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That keeps it upon grace, which is a gift of God, so no man could boast and brag by saying, I've done so much, I should be saved. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So Paul's ministry was all about uh, 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 fighting for the purity. That's why Paul was to always talked about defending the faith. He had to defend the faith. He had to fight off the, uh, the things that uh, men were trying to add to the false teachers, were trying to add to the faith to, to corrupt the faith of pure saints. That's the reason why Paul kept, if you know, one of the greatest writings he had was talking about circumcision. And he started talking about the men is no longer circumcised outwardly, but we are circumcised of, in the heart. What a great word, circumcised in the heart. God cuts away the unprofitableness in our spirit, man. Well, that was Paul's ministry to defend. So Paul would go into the synagogues when he got in the city, and he would refute the false teachings and the false doctrines of that day. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Paul began to teach, not only Paul, but this is what the job of the apostles, say apostles, Say apostles. The, the apostles' job was to preach a message. A message, some, some of them had a message that was crafted for a certain demographic. Like we know Peter was the apostle to the Jews, while Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So apostles, every apostle, every true apostle uh, has a message, okay? He, he has a message to a demographic. You hear what I'm saying? His life is embodied is the embodiment of that message. I don't know if y'all caught what I'm trying to say. So, 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 these people who you see calling themselves apostles and bishops, but they have no message, they're false. They're false because they have no message. If you ask an apostle, what you should ask them is, what is your message? Because an apostle is a man sent with a message. It's a sent one with a message. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Apostle, apostle is, or is, a, is a military term, apostolate. He executes a position of who sent him. Oh, yeah. He executes a position of who sent him. Y'all get, he executes a position. In other words, he, 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 is, he, was, he, was, he was gifted and graced to speak a word, a message in a certain area or generation, and he executes that position. He only, he only executes what he was sent to do because he's always on a mission. He's mission-minded. He's a soldier. Y'all got what I'm trying to say? Okay. 
So we see now that anybody can be an apostle if you just call yourself one. And anybody can be a bishop if you make yourself one. And you can go online and get ordained. So we have all of this falseness and stuff going on. And people are very confused at all of these titles. And uh, I begin to, when I begin to look at this, uh, I begin to just look and see uh, the, 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 um, the weirdness uh, that, that, that I begin to see in the, in the body of Christ. In other words, uh, most men of God I saw wore suits. And they just dressed natural and plain and all of a sudden I began to see um, uh, you know we got the robes and I'm saying well ain't nothing too too rare with that that's pretty fine you know brothers preaching in the robe with the crosses on them as they call it the bishop's robes I'm, I'm sure and uh, you know and then you start seeing the the, 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 the the robe with the belt with the with the with the little pail on it and it's okay now you see the the gold chain with the cross on the end and so you trying to I'm saying why what what's going on then when I started to study Catholicism I said what well, I said, why are we looking like priests and bishops now? Why, why are we taking the look? Now, we know bishop is a title. Y'all got time for me to teach y'all this. Bishop is a title in the New Testament. It's an overseer. Bishop is just an overseer. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? It's a title. You can, you, can, you can actually interchange bishop and pastor and elder. That can be the same operation, just about. But somehow, because of the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which Revelations talks about, uh, 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 that God said he hated the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which exalts the piety over the laity or makes the leaders super men in the eyes of the people or cause the leaders to become worshipped, we see a super sect of leadership that call themselves bishops and apostles that seem to be so much greater than the laity that they almost need worship. And so you must, and, and I thought it was just one sect or part of the church, but as I begin to look deeper, I see mo a lot of denominations are interconnected when it comes to bishops. And I'm start, and then and I saw I start to saw you. So when I say weirdness, I started to see weird practices that was really not part of the Christian understanding as far as the New Testament but I started to see practices that were questionable or were foreign foreign are you hearing what I'm saying and I began to say where are these brothers getting these crooked crows or sticks and these fish hats and where are they getting this from because I don't see this in the in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as a matter of fact Jesus talks about uh, 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 the Bible talks about uh, 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 that, 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 that whatever you are, you are not that outwardly, but you are that inwardly. So what, why, why we got this garb and this tradition, say man. And as, as, as I begin to see the names change, like the presiding bishop of the such and such and the super chief apostle of the such and such, and as I begin to, as the robes grew longer and more attire but got added to these people, uh, so did the so did the degradation. So did the sin. Y'all wanna? Uh, I wasn't gonna preach this. Y'all there? So as we got more titles and more bishops and more, so did the the the, the, the sexual perversion increased. So did the molestations and the abuse and the baby secret babies of love childs of. And I try to figure out what is happening here are y'all hearing what i'm saying if you go overseas you know that catholicism has always been a big deal it's just a big deal overseas and most because uh most christians don't know that they are pro they are protestants of catholicism protestant they are part of the roman the the, the martin luther Re Re reformation that protested the catholic church by saying it is not the way to god but because we don't know our church history and we have men at the top who are in the bed with the pope we are doing catholic doctrine and we're coming up with the spirit of rome in the church oh catch the connection are y'all heard what I'm saying? In other words, if we do what they do, we're going to get what they get. So what do they do? They have sex with boys. 
You're seeing that prevalence come upon us now. Bishops and stuff is, y'all want to talk. Uh, y'all heard what I'm saying? Because, are y'all there? If you structure your house like a prostitute, don't be shocked when John show up. If, 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 if you walk, if you, if, you, if you wear clothes of a prostitute, don't get shocked when tricks pull over and say, what's happening? You're going to get what you have, what you, uh, what you pattern yourself after. Uh, are y'all there? So this is our dilemma that I begin to see. And the Lord was dealing with me about this because I, after I did some studying, Everything clicked to me. Everything that's happened within the last 10 years, all the foolishness, scandals falling, why we're so into the world, Hollywood. I, I said, I see now. If you are connected to the spirit of the world, then you're going to have the fruit of the world. Because at the top, at the top, are you hearing what I'm saying? Let's say it better. At the root, at the root, if the root is bad, the whole tree will be full of bad fruit. If the root be evil, if the root be defiled. So at the top, these people at the top are not connected to Christ. At the top. Uh, let's go here. Now, go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 real quick. Let me get this in real quick. I have to get this out on tape. On, on, this is a teaching that somebody's been asking me for. And I want to get it out. False bishops, false apostles, false coverings. Is the spirit of Rome. Say, is the spirit of Rome. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying here. It is the spirit of Rome. The falseness is the spirit of Rome. Y'all there? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse uh, 13. Y'all there? Y'all there? It says, for such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. I'm reading it out of the NET. Y'all see that? False apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Y'all seeing that? So why, now this is, this is what, this is the way Paul was ministering because he ran into these people all the time that had disguised themselves to bring the people back under bondage, bring them back under what the, the spirit of liberty has delivered them from, which to bring them back under the rule of man, to get them out from under the grace of God. This is why people find it hard at this ministry because they're, they, they're, they're really looking for the Nicolaitan style ministry where you are totally controlled. But they are not used to a pastor that say, what you think? Make up your mind. Make a decision. People don't like that because they, so they seek out people to control them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because most of the church now is structured under this Nicolation, uh, I'm your father, I'm your mother. And when you start doing that, you start appealing really to the flesh and you making a flesh soul tie, how you know you gonna be their father, their mother? They might supposed to get something and go. But now if you notice, everybody, you have to be their son, you have to be their, you have to be a daughter, and everybody's looking for that. And so you have a, so anytime you have a bunch of rejected, no daddy, half mama people, they're going to get abused by people who will give you that little bit of mothering and little bit of fathering that you so desire. So false apostles are made by immature people. People that don't know the word, don't study the word, don't want to study the word, show up to church, no Bible. They don't have no study time with God. They don't have no relationship. They just want to be led only without being led by the Holy Spirit. Say amen. amen. When you do that, you, 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 give a person, uh, you give a person too much dominion over your, over your word life. Over, yeah. Every, you shouldn't only get the word from me. You give me too much power 
over your spiritual development. You should get some from me, but I shouldn't be the only source. You should have a well on the inside of you that springs up living water. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Y'all there? So because we have this doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which is just basically false pop apostles and false bishops, we have a, we have a program, a evil demonic program to fight maturity in the people. Now you see people, when, when now you see teachings now that they teach against people having, getting a word or understanding God for themselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And they have leaders around them that will counsel you 24-7 to keep the mind of the leader in you versus the mind of the spirit in you. So that's why people come in, the first thing they want is a meeting. Because they 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 their 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 Nicolation minded. They want somebody to totally rule them. That's why the Bible gives leaders a specific word: don't lord over the people. They're not your people. Don't lord over them. That means you shouldn't make no every decision. They don't have to tell you everything going on in their life. And I think some of y'all get a little indignant because y'all think y'all come from places where y'all think if people love y'all, they listen to all that. And me and my wife don't want to know all of that stuff. And y'all get offended like we don't care, but we understand you'll never grow if I'm always there to hear your stuff. Put your head down, go through it. That's going to give you, that's going to cause your spiritual legs to be mature versus you causing my spiritual arms to grow by carrying your load. The Bible says every man should bear his own load. Uh, so, the, so this spirit of Rome, this false leadership has to keep you children-like so that you can continue to get spoon-fed the milk of the word which causes you to be needy and, de in, and dependent as same way if you only feed a child milk that child's only going to be depend going to constantly be dependent on the mother. Once you wean that child and that child learned to pick up a chicken leg, it no longer is dependent upon you for sustenance. But if I am looking to lord over you, then I must keep you immature. I don't stress how important the word is. And I give you a great daycare experience. You know, we had our daycare, you know, children, we had to have certain new things all the time for the little kids. Certain areas. We might have to have the art area over here, and this is the toy area. And when they come, you have to, you had to have theme days, because the kids needed to see change all the time. Because kids, just, they get, children can't hold their attention long, so you got to give them more. You got to, oh, this is the fall season, and you got to have... The, the, the pumpkins out and the, you know, the Thanksgiving look, all the, you know, this stuff, you had to have that uh, because, because we had to give them what they desired because they were childish. Say amen. As you, as, now you disapprove it, if you get in the 12th grade, you walk in the screen, there's hardly nothing on the wall in the room. <laughs> ain't no decoration, ain't nothing. It's just a blank room and you sitting there and there's a desk. The black boy learned it and you learn you why? Because your maturity, because your maturity, you maturing has caused you not to need all of the props, and you don't, you don't even learn that way anymore. See, as you begin to eat the meat of the word, you don't even learn milk no more. The milk way will actually frustrate you. This is why people are seeking me out now. People are seeking me out because the milk is frustrating them. As they're sitting there hearing a good hooping message because they got to give you the theatric and dynamic because I must make you think you're getting something. In their heart, they're saying there's got to be more 
So they're up on the internet just surfing, looking, and that's where they're getting messed up at too because they're running across all kinds of word teachers because they're hungry because they can't get that. Say amen. Are y'all there? So uh, the movement, thank you, Lord. Let's, well, should I go there? I'll go there real quick and then I'll, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll come back. Go over here to Malachi real quick. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. I think. Matter of fact, let's just go to chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. Y'all there? Malachi chapter 4, y'all there? Now look, we're going to look, we're going to, uh, now, now, this, what I'm trying to set up right here is uh, God gives Malachi an understanding of a curse, a, say a curse, a curse that comes on the people. Are y'all there? Look at verse 4, it says, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I command unto him in Horeb. For all Israel with Israelites and judgments. Listen, with statutes and judgments. Y'all got that? He said, remember this law, the statutes and judgments. Remember the laws of God with statutes, the statutes and judgments. Look at me. Remember the, remember the laws with statutes and judgments, right? Now, once a person is in remembrance constantly of the law, they're really walking in the spirit at that point. They are people of the word, right? That is maturity. Why? Because the Bible says really being grown and full grown is, being a, is, having your, is having your senses exercised knowing how to discern good from evil. Well, the way you want to discern good from evil is constantly be a person of the word because if you don't have the word, you could think something's good and it's not. But the word of God will always tell you what is good and what's not good. Come on, talk to me. So right here when God is telling, Malachi is telling them, you got to remember this law of Moses or these statutes and judgments because the statutes and judgments are not for the world, they're for you to judge yourself. Once you become so judging yourself, you begin to grow in maturity, right? Look at this. He says, Behold, I will send you uh, the, prophet, uh, the prophet before, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great day, dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite thee with a curse. Y'all ready? Come on, y'all ready? Now, the Bible is saying that there's a curse that's going to come on the people if the hearts of the, of the children don't turn to the fathers, the hearts of the fathers don't turn to the children. That scripture is where we got this uh, uh, apostolic covering and this bishop covering from where everybody needed to be covered. I agree with that, but what, the, what they left out was the people that I covered need to already have the commandments and the statutes already living it so that they know how to be covered and not be abused. Did y'all catch what I just said? Did y'all catch what I said? So we see, so what happens if the people that are under apostolic ministry or under bishops uh, and the bishops are false by not maturing them, what happens to the people? Well, verse 4 says if, the, if they can be covered, their hearts can turn to the Father, but if they don't have these uh, their judgments or the, or the statutes and judgments, then they will still be immature. So there will still be a curse of immaturity even though they're under leadership. Now what I'm telling y'all is what's wrong with the church now. We have false bishops, false apostles, false leaders that have already decided that they're going to get what they're going to get from the world. And they need the church, they need the saints to support it so they can't allow you to get too mature and knowledgeable of the word. So, so I'm bamboozling you with flavored milk. That means when you come to church, you're getting a different flavor, but it's still milk. And they think they're getting fed because they're getting a new flavor. Well, this, we get lemon milk today and the strawberry milk, but it's still milk. Because I cannot allow you to grow, or you, or your, just by you growing, it's going to show you who I am. Your growth will reveal to you 
who the leader is or whether they're walking in what they say or not. So you growing is truly a danger to people who won't use you. Are y'all there? It's like somebody trying to teach you something, but they always hold the answers behind their back. They never allow you to see the answers, but they look back and see what they can teach you without letting you know what the answers really are. That's to keep you, and you walking away because you, 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 you heard something, but you never got truly taught the truth. Amen? Come on, talk to me. Okay, so go back. Go back. Let's go back. Real quick, I'm going to get done. Go back to, no, we don't correct this. Go to a, a, a Revelation chapter 2, real quick. I have some other scriptures, but I got to get done. Revelation chapter 2. All right, Revelation chapter 2. Are y'all there? This is the reason why you have to fight. You have to fight your gag reflex. There's a gag reflex that comes when it's just too rich food. It's too much for you. When you're eating strong food, strong meat. You have to fight that. And you fight it the same way you fight when you don't want to throw up and you feel like it's coming and you fighting it, you got to fight it like that. Because when a person is receiving so much meat, they'll want to gag. When a person starts to gag is when they mind to go somewhere else. They'll tune out. They'll just, they'll somehow, they, they'll, they'll, get, they'll almost get tired of hearing. They'll want to watch TV. They'll want to do something else because that's their gag reflex kicking in because it's too much. And they don't, and it's, their mind is trying to do, throw up. Try to throw up all of this truth that they heard. Say amen. So you got to fight that reflex. Yeah. Are y'all there? Amen. Let me show you something. Look at, uh, of, what I say, Revelation chapter 2. Yes. Look at verse 2. I know that works, that labor, that patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Y'all see that? Amen. Y'all see that? Amen. So there is false, this false apostle movement needs a people that are able to determine what an apostle is. Now that takes maturity. You have to have a little bit of insight and studying and spirit to know what's a true bishop, what is a true apostle. Well, most people don't even, couldn't even tell you what an apostle is or what a bishop is. So without the true insight, because the people are so immature, they don't even know what a false one or a real one is. Are y'all there? Amen. Okay. So, I turn over here to Romans 1. See, it's your job. Uh, it's your job as a Christian to protect yourself. I said protect yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't expect somebody to tell you whether something is right. You have to learn the voice of God, get in the word of God, keep the judgments and statutes of the Lord on your heart. So you, now, you, now you're not going to know what's right or wrong if you don't judge yourself. The reason why people follow bad leaders, and leaders that cheat and lie and steal or fornicate is because they fornicate. And a person that fornicates can't see it in another person. You ain't going to judge it in another person. So that's why they stay under those ministries. That's why they like the pastors that fall. Right, right. They like it because this is, I don't, I, I, I don't feel convicted. And the word, the word of God will never judge me because he's into what I'm into. Now, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, let me go. Look at this. Uh, Romans 1. Now, now, Romans 1, y'all know what this is. This is. Romans 1 is the spirit of Rome. This is what a society looks like before that society implodes. Now imploding is different from explode. Explode means blow out. Implodes mean fall in on itself, which is what America is doing. We're getting ate up from the inside. Our moral fiber is getting ate away. That we, when it, it's eating away the, the moral pillars, 
the pillars are the supports like for a building. Once those are ate away, there'll be no support holding the structure. So the structure, so we're not getting blew out, we're getting ate up. No country would dare take us out, we're too strong, but we can destroy ourselves. This is the spirit, this is the, this is the, this is the Balaam trap. That's the Balaam trap when he said, look, I can't curse them, but they're going to curse themselves through their immorality. What cursed them? Sexual sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me show you something. So, 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 so Romans 1, I know we've read it before many times, but I just want to give you an understanding. You've got to understand the mindset or the backdrop, what Paul was writing to. You've got to realize when Paul was going down the Roman streets, he saw stuff. He was seeing the debauchery and the Senate was having sex with boys and the, the, he saw the, the bathhouses where it was orgies. He saw all of this stuff. So he had to write in a strong way to jar the people out of their paganism to make them realize you Christians who got saved don't mix. Don't mix. Because the spirit of Rome is mixture. Because that's what Constantine did. He mixed paganism with Catholicism. I mean he mixed Christianity with paganism and came up with Catholicism. So what Paul kept saying is you can't mix this thing. Don't mix. There's no shadows in this. Don't go back and get your old man and try to work in with your new man. You got to put off the old man completely. Are y'all? This is why he was talking to these Romans this way because he, uh, he, he was in Rome. He grew up under as a Roman citizen. He knew what they done. And he could see y'all perversion is going to destroy y'all. Especially once Paul came into the truth of who Jesus Christ was, that Jesus was the exalter of the righteous. Yeah. Okay, now look. So now this the reason why I'm saying this is because this is what it looks like when you have false leadership. Because leaders, whenever you have false leadership, the first thing you will sense is this feeling of insecurity. You won't feel safe. You won't feel safe. Whenever there's false leadership. You want, that means somebody at the top is too busy worried about themselves. They could care less about what's happening with the people. That's why we don't feel safe anymore. We got politicians who's eating good, and they, they ain't taking the health care. They ain't, they ain't on that. They, they feeding themselves, and they feel safe. But we are, everybody in America, we're all insecure now because we don't know we have a false leadership, right? Yeah. Whenever you're part of a company and you have a leader, a boss, that's, that doesn't deal with issues, you feel an insecurity. You ever been in an area where you feel like anything can happen in here? That means there's the leadership. There's no real leadership in here. Another thing that when you have false leadership is you'll be a part of a ministry that they don't deal with no issues. I ain't talking about they won't deal with people who, have, who are stirring up foolishness. That's a false leadership because false leadership doesn't confront. They manipulate. That's why y'all don't understand me when I just cut, cut straight. Look, man, stop. Why? Because it makes, when, when, a, when, a, when a, if a person's overacting a fool in a ministry and the pastor know and don't say nothing, it makes everybody else feel like, wait a minute, there must be some favoritism or something's going on here. But when the pastor come in and deal with them, it causes everybody to feel secure that you're not going to allow them to abuse me. So the, the, the main feeling of, that's why when a woman has a husband and he's not a man of God and he doesn't, pray and doesn't have a real strong uh, a spiritual life, she doesn't feel secure. Because she know he may be the leader in the natural, but spiritually, the devil, don't, the devil don't care nothing about him. He has no stopping power for the enemy. That's why a woman will always feel insecure because she knows he's, that's why she'll feel insecure when she see her husband sinning. Because she knows I, I can't trust your, you don't, you, you, don't have the, you don't have what it takes in the spirit to stop the enemy. You can't keep me, you know, so a false leader will all with the, the characteristics of a false leader is insecurity. The characteristics of a real leader is it's a, it's, it's usually listen. Understand how I'm saying this? It's a fathering feel. Now, I ain't talking about no. Sorry, I ain't talking about spiritual. No, I'm talking about it's you feel like if you had a good father, you know what I'm talking about. There's a fathering feel to it. In other words, you know that daddy watching me. I ain't gonna go over the edge. Safety. You know that's what it feels like when you have a yeah yeah. I don't Okay, let me show you something. So, I was saying all of that to say, I was, I was telling you that because this false movement, this false apostle movement, uh, this is the reason why 
the women of God, the women in the body of Christ, got out from up under true authority, followed false teachers and preachers that drug them out of true apostolic authority. And that's why these women who all went that way, the whole generation of women, they are all are living are insecure, still confused, still don't know who they are, still running around the women's conference, still... Why? Because they were led out of the security of probably a pastor out to these false teachers that was wolves that was draining them for finances. Is this too much? A real leader will always make you or always point you to your leader. That's how you know. You go if you go somewhere and somebody you talk to somebody, if if if, if somebody will listen to you talk about your church, they ain't real. That's the last thing they're gonna do. A real leader, no, no, uh. Uh, a real leader stand with leaders. A false leader will make you with baby. Oh, come on, come on, baby, you just been abused. And be love, try to love on you, romancing you when they should tell you no. You need to go and humble yourself, or at least go get that right. Do your pastor know you? Do you feel that way? Most time they ain't talk to the past at all. They just ran to, a, to some other leader. Okay, let me get done. Look. Now, verse, uh, let's look at verse, verse, verse uh, 17. Wait a minute. Now, it says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it written, the just shall live by Faith. This is the this is the posture or the position of every true prophet. I mean, or every true apostle or leader or pastor. What is this? What is this position? To make you live by faith. It's not to make you live by me. It's to make you live by faith. It's to keep pushing you to live by faith. It's to stretch you to live by faith. It's not to keep telling you. It ain't even to keep telling you who you are. Because that's something you should know by faith. Because if I can tell you who you are, if I'm not around you, will you still believe that's who you are? But if God saw who you are, you can go to the end of the Siberia and still know who you are. All of that's a faith thing. So true leaders make you live by faith. Well, I don't say, when I say make you, I'm saying they, they encourage you to live by faith. After a while, they quit fooling with you because they know you're not living by faith. You want to live by piggyback, and you want to live by this Nicolation system where somebody's totally exalted over your life. You tell them all your business, and they put it in their spiritual calculator and come up with a, a solution for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, uh, true, 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 true leaders do. They stretch you in every way to live by faith. They stretch you in your finances. They come up with ways for you to give because you need to be stressed. They, come, they stretch you in your serving. They find ways for you to get in the church and serve. They make you, they, they stretch you in your excellence. Amen. They make you know just because you're doing something don't mean you're doing it to the best of your ability. Amen. So the whole, to make you have more faith for what you do. The whole point is to strengthen your faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? False leaders want you to come. Just come. Just come. Just sit. Just, just come sit and give. That's it. Don't get involved. Don't get engaged. They don't care about you go out and fornicate and live any kind of way. They don't care. Why? Because... This does, your fornication does not hurt my bottom line. Your, 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 your weekly indiscretions don't bother me. Drug dealers don't bother me. They don't hurt my bottom line. If anything, they're helping my bottom line. So, I, so they, don't pre, they don't preach a convicting word because why do I need to, I don't, wanna, I don't need to convict you. Because to me, this has become a business. It's a business. This is what this false apostle movement is. And see, many people have gotten abused. Some of y'all don't know. Y'all may not understand how this church world works. But many people have gotten abused because they sought out spiritual fathers. That's what we were taught to do back in the 90s. We heard this big thing on spiritual fathers. And, 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 and men of God sought out spiritual fathers only to find out that you just sought out a wolf. Everybody will cover you if you give them something. I've never seen an a, a, a apostle not cover somebody. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, uh, it, it would seem like and there was a brother. There was a brother that came to me. Many, many people have come here before, and 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 and, and brother said, you know, you my spiritual father, and uh, I just and I said, and I said, brother, no, I'm not. 
And because and, what do people do? As soon as they meet you, they want to give into your ministry. They want to impress you by your, all that stuff. And I, but see, when you real, you like, look, dude, you know you can't buy nothing from me. And if I don't feel no connection with you, why am I going to have you around stringing you along and I don't really have no connection with you? I'm going to tell you no. But see, these brothers, this false apostle movement uh, gathered, this gathers people for the sake of the tithe. For the sake of the tithe. They gather you to organizations so they can get paid from the tithe without having any stake in your development. That's how you have orphanages, spiritual orphanages, where they're not maturing or growing them up. They're just using them. So there's the curse of eternal immaturity. Why? I'm not teaching you the word because to teach you the word is going to reveal me. To teach you the word is going to reveal me. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? A good leader knows that. A real leader understands. If I to teach you, see, I'm see, I'm when I, when I teach, I'm not teaching you what's back here. Right, right. I just what what's back here. I always put it right here. This is what I show you what's back here because I understand what where I'm preaching from. I don't have a secret book or I don't have a secret agenda to manipulate you to do something I want you to do. I have a revelation that pulls from God that I can show you everything I got back here because he'll put me something else back there. He gonna keep giving me revelation. Why? Because I don't have no agenda. I'm not trying to motivate you to e either way. Are you understand what I'm saying? But 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 these false teachers and denominations and, and stuff, they have books, doctrines and creeds that they take. And that's what they preach to the people. That's why you can go to any church in America. If it say Kojic, you, 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 know, you know exactly what you're going to do when you get in there. If it say apostolic, you can walk in right and not, not miss a beat. That bishop can be your bishop. Why? Because they're all the same. Because they don't necessarily have to teach the word. They teach you. They don't even teach. If you know what they're doing, it's, 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 it's all ex emotion to get you excited. But... The leadership is taught this little black book that this is what we really believe. That's why they tell you, you ain't saved. Oh, their denomination, they ain't saved. Why they come up with that? That's in their book. That's in their creed. That's in their doctrine. They forget the grace of God. Ain't nothing in there. Are y'all there or not there? Now, I'm saying this because, remember, the just shall live by faith. Real men and real women of God, what do they do? Teach you to live by faith. Say, teach me to live by faith. Okay, that's what real men and women of God do. If I was a bad man of God, I would, I would, get a, I would build a soul tie with you, a natural connection. I would be your daddy. I would try to be your daddy. I would have my wife trying to be your mama. Now, in order to do that, I need to know your business. So I would have a lifeline. You call me anytime, tell me all about it. And what that would do, it would build a soul tie with us, but it would not mature you. Really, the opposite would happen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? A real leader would teach you to live by faith. In other words, a real teacher, or a real leader would not grab you and jump off the diving board with you. A real leader would really push you off. That's how you learn. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But, but y'all, some of y'all know, even if you come out of the background like that, well, you come out of the background where you did everything you went through, everything, they did nothing but counsel, you nothing but talk you all day. Every, anytime you're going through something, you could call, you always got all these prayer points, all these people, all these people assigned to you. All that did was make you never use your faith. Then most people even come to this ministry and find out how much faith they didn't have. Like, dang, I thought I was living for God. I didn't, hadn't, didn't understand God at all. The whole, and then seeing people get to know me because they love the word and they realize my operations are different because I don't run to you when you stub your foot, when you hit your toe, when your marriage is going through, when you get, I don't run to you for those reasons. How, you got to work out your own salvation. I can't, if I do that, you're going to be immature and weak every time. Even with my own children, I can't do that with. I can't even do it with them. That's stuff they got to learn to go through. Work it out. Fight. So real leaders teach you to live by faith. Amen? Amen. So I don't have time to show y'all, but I'll just tell y'all so I can get done. Uh, this sparked me because um, I was looking at uh, I was looking at something online. 
And uh, what I found out was because I, I, I fell in love with uh, the Full Gospel Fellowship Choir. You know, that was the bow down and he is here and all that. Remember that CD? And that was like real powerful CD. Worship was great. You know, Bishop Paul Morton, of course, you know, he was anointed to sing and all that stuff. I didn't understand because I had some pastor friends of pastors that I knew who was a part of the, the fellowship. And I thought it was a Baptist thing. Like, this is a Baptist folk. But it really wasn't. This is a fellowship for everybody if you want to get involved in it. And it became, it was it's the fastest growing, became the biggest organization, one of the biggest uh, fellowships uh, in America, fast, one of the fastest growing denominations basically in America. As I began to study this, I began to understand that I started seeing things because all of a sudden you start seeing everybody get ordained bishops. And in, 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 in all denominations, just about, I said, why is everybody becoming a bishop? Yet it was the bishops that was falling. It was the bishops that was making all these mistakes, and I couldn't understand why. Well, when I really looked at it, I began to realize that these brothers are all connected, but there, but then when, but 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 they were, but there was a, there was something set in place by uh, Paul Morton's bishop that there was an agenda with from the Rome, from the Pope, to bring in African American churches back under Catholicism because. African American churches was the least demographic. Black people are the least demographic of Catholics. We're the smallest number of Catholics. So there was a plan to bring black churches back under the, 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 the government of Rome. So they sought out bishops. So because these brothers were already calling themselves bishops, because you got the Kojic bishops, you got Pentecostal bishops, apostolic bishops, these brothers called themselves bishops. What they did was these. Uh, one of them's name is Bishop Delano, and it's another some other, some other ones. But they made most of these brothers bishops and pastors feel that they did not have true apostolic authority if they wasn't connected to the to, to the to the to the connection of, of 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 the of the archbishop and the pope himself. So this is why our bishops, Pentecostal bishops, apostolic bishops. I have pictures of this. They go they over in Rome, hundreds of them bowing down on their face. On, on, to the Pope, they're kissing his feet and, 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 and rings and stuff. These are bishops that you know of. These are known, 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 known bishops. Well, then I found out as I started studying that, 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 that the whole organization of, 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 of Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship, now these are Baptists. Now, how in the world did we get... But then when you start looking at these ordination services, you start seeing the croziers, the, the fish hats, the mitres, the, the garb, they ordained them the same way. I saw two ceremonies. I saw Catholic ordination service when they ordained, ordained priests, and I saw secular or Pentecostal and, and Kojic ordination services. They ordained the same way. They repeat the same Nicene Creed. The same Catholic, uh, they kiss the ring of the bishop the same way they kiss the Pope's ring. It's the same ceremony. So what Satan did was, that's why Paul said, beware, beware, beware. Because right, you, he's doing it right under your noses, and you don't know, you, you could be connected to the Antichrist spirit, which is sitting in Rome now. And these bishops are connected. And that's why now, as you start seeing them connected, you start seeing pedophilia, pedophilia. Not in Catholicism, not in Catholic churches, in mainstream churches. Now you see this spirit of Rome. You see this... This, this, this homosexual thing's on the loose. Now these pre preachers are now, uh, bishops are now ordaining homosexuals and they okay with it now. Why? Because the spirit of Rome has come upon the ministry because the heads of these denominations and churches, these bishops, are now under the Rome. They're under Rome. So we are literally have a beast system. That's why the Bible says, come out from among my people and be separate. And we're, we're thinking it's talking about a, a world, we thought, a, a country. No, it's talking about the system. This system, this Roman system, that has uh, that has basically exalted man in the place of God, 